After having Denise explaining the theoretical background that gives support to our project, I'm going to talk about the project's phases, the participants, and I'm going to show you samples of the students' productions. Based on Willis, the project had three uh, important phases, the pre-task, the task, and the post-task one. I'm going to explain each one of them in the following slides. As participants, we had 15 students of Portuguese as a foreign language living in the United States studying in the second semester of the undergraduate program at the University at Albany, SUNY. And in Brazil, we had 35 students of English as a foreign language, mostly beginner or low intermediate level students from the Federal Institute of Santa Catarina, Araranguá, in the south of Brazil. So the project was developed in three phases, the pre-task, task and post-task. In each one of them we had different activities which will be explained and exemplified in this presentation. In the pre-task phase of the project, we talked about the objectives of the project. We brainstormed ideas of topics to be presented in each one of the videos to be produced. We discussed about the equipment and the resources necessary, formed the groups, and most importantly, we developed a script. So the teacher revealed each one of the scripts proposed by the students and the groups of students also revealed it and verified if everything was in consonance with what they intended to show to the other group of students in the other country. In the task phase, students filmed and edited the video. Students were free to add music, sound effects, to add images, to show themselves in the video, or just to present images. In the post-task phase of the project, the videos were presented and discussed in the classroom. The topics presented in the videos were reflected about and the students provided their opinions if they agreed or not, if that was true for the group of people they know or if it wasn't true. Also, the students had a moment to provide feedback to the students in the other country and they also answered a survey about the project. What is important to emphasize about this post-task phase is that the assessment developed by the students was more meaningful in the sense that it goes against a traditional type of assessment that is a test. Students didn't have a test. They had discussions about the videos produced. They had feedback from the students who also produced videos and they gave feedback. They had peer assessment because they were working in group and they had the chance to evaluate the project as a whole and also to self-evaluate their participation in this project. To provide feedback for others, a student accessed the videos on a SurveyMonkey questionnaire and they analyzed certain aspects of each video and also provided comments or asked questions in the comments box, as you can see on the screen. Among the topics selected, students talked about university in the United States, holidays, avocado in Brazil, and mac and cheese, as you can see on the screen. Here we have some example of students' feedback. Uh, the first two examples are in Portuguese because they were uh, students in the USA learning Portuguese. So to provide feedback, some of the students also decided to, to, to do that in the language they were learning. So the first one is in Portuguese. I'm going to translate it for you. It says, oh, that's interesting that people clap their hands in front of the house instead of ringing the bell. Also, the second is in Portuguese. So I'm going to translate it. Interesting, can we have avocado ice cream? So these were comments about others' videos. The last one is from a Brazilian student who is studying English as a foreign language. So the feedback provided was in English. And 
these students says, congratulations, your video was pretty interesting. I just think that you changed the word when you said processo para assistir a aula. In the beginning, you wanted to say processo para entrar ou ingressar na faculdade. So, this student was providing a corrective feedback to the group that produced the specific video. We are going to show some examples of a student's production here, but we want to invite you to access the Facebook fan page that brings all the videos together. The name of the page is Intercultural Language Learning and you can access it through the link provided in this slide or just type in the name in um, on the Facebook website. So, among the topics that students talked about, we had pizza in Brazil and uh, hip-hop music in the United States. And these are the two excerpts of video that you're going to watch in the few seconds. I'll leave you to the videos and I hope you enjoy it and visit our page to watch the others. Pizza in Brazil is eaten with knife and fork. This habit is very rude in the USA because they use hands to eat. We also put mayonnaise and mustard in our pizza. And here we have many flavors of sweet pizza, as ice cream pizza, chocolate pizza, banana and cinnamon pizza, and many others. A cultura hip hop se tornou popular nos Estados Unidos na década de 1970 com, com os afro-americanos, mas agora é adotada por todo tipo de adolescentes, mas em há muitos artistas diferentes que vimos. Alguns deles são Future, Drake. Thank you for watching. We are looking forward to hearing your comments and questions on this online presentation.